So thank you for joining this talk. I'm Patrick, and this is Adwaid, and today we present Smart Sleeve. This is a joint work between the Media Interaction Lab, the Salon University, and Google. The main motivation of this work is to use the physical prototypes properties of textiles. Clothes or textiles are most often soft and comfortable. They're stretchable and non-rigid, and we wear them on a daily basis. Therefore, it seems to be the ideal medium to interact with. By researching the related work, we discovered that the authors either concentrate on surface gestures, like tapping or swiping, or on specific deformation gestures. Two fully functional prototypes have been shown with project jacquard and gesture sleeve. However, the authors concentrate on surface gestures only and do not fully take advantage of a flexible textile sensor. Other projects, like pinstripe and grabbing at an angle, demonstrate how deformation gestures on textiles can be detected and used. However, most of the systems are designed to explore one specific gesture type only. SmartSleeve, in contrast, enables the detection of surface gestures as well as deformation gestures with the same sensor. Before we dive deeper, Let's see how SmartSleeve performs in action. In this video, you can see how a user interacts with the sleeve and the corresponding force image in the back. On the right side of the screen, the detected gesture is displayed. Let's start with the implementation of the sleeve. Beginning with the textile sensor material, the connection between the soft textile and the rigid driver electronic, and our improvements regarding crosstalk. Smart Sleeve is a pressure-sensitive tactile input sensor, which is based on flex tiles, sewn in a sleeve form factor. The sleeve consists of three layers of fabric, all equally bidirectional stretchable. The top and the bottom layers are the connection layers, which consists of alternating stripes of conductive and non-conductive fabric. The two layers are placed orthogonally to over each other to form a grid. The middle layer consists of a pressure-sensitive fabric. Applied mechanical stress onto the layer causes a resistance drop, which can be measured. Let's have some numbers. This sensor can detect forces between 50 and 500 gram, with a spatial resolution of 1.6 sensors per square inch. In total, the sleeve consists of 360 sensors and weights about 124 grams, including the connection wiring. Due to the reason that Smart Sleeve is a non-rigid sensor, we have been looking for a connection between the soft textile and the rigid measurement electronic, which doesn't limit the, flexible, the flexibility of such a sensor. And what we came up with was an unobtrusive sewn based connection using a small diameter wire, which can be easily sewn into the textile. As wire, we use Vero wire or road runner, which is a small diameter, isolated wire, usually used for repairing and corrected printed circuit boards. The isolated enamel coating can be easily removed with a soldering iron at a temperature, range, at a temperature between 400 and 430 degrees. The small diameter of only 0 0.15 millimeters makes the wire very deformable and therefore ideal for smart sleeve. The wire is really robust. It even withstands sewing with a normal off-the-shelf sewing machine. In order not to limit the flexibility of the sleeve, we have evaluated three different stretchable stitching types, which are super stretch, double overlock, and zigzag. All of them work probably. Probably, however, one performed better than the others. Super stretch raises more tension to the top yarn, and therefore it can tear more easily. Double overlock applies less tension to the yarn, but unfortunately, this stitch uses more wire, which makes the fabric stiffer. Therefore, we recommend zigzag stitch because it doesn't apply a lot of tension nor it uses a lot of wire. Its simple pattern and stretchability maintains the comfort of use. As mentioned before, SmartSleeve is based on a resistive tactile sensor, which suffers from crosstalk. This failure affects the accuracy, the measurement, and the recognition system. On the right figure, you can see an equivalent circuit 
an equ equivalent electrical circuit of a three by three matrix. There, where every resistor can be seen as a sensor. Crosstalk is a phenomenon by which one sensor in the circuit creates an undecided effect on another sensor. This crosstalk phenomenon is caused in the way such a sensor matrix is formed. In order to eliminate those failures, we explored and evaluated different resistive read-up methods. Therefore, we used a three by three matrix where, every pressed six, where, where we pressed six sensors equally. This force pattern allows us to evaluate the distribution of crosstalk along the columns and the rows of the matrix. All read-up methods have been tested with the same sensor matrix. First, we analyzed how our system behaves without crosstalk reduction, and we had an average error of 34.5%. Next, we, evalu we evaluated chronic solutions to reduce crosstalk. These solutions used electrical properties of an operation amplifier. These methods are also called zero potential method, grounding, and virtual grounding. In both cases we evaluated, in both cases that we evaluated, we achieved an average error of about 11%. Further, we evaluated mathematical solutions to reduce crosstalk, which was proposed by Xu and others. In this approach, we add fixed constant resistors for every single column. This allows us to measure the effects of crosstalk of the underdetermined matrix. matrix. In comparison to the other methods, it, doesn't, it does not suppress crosstalk. Instead, calculates the crosstalk distribution for every single sensor. With this method, we achieved an average error of less than 1%. Therefore, we used that method for smart sleeve. The sensing properties of smart sleeve enables a wide variety of interaction techniques. Based on prior related work and an iterative design process, we composed a list of 22 different gestures. We further categorized them into surface and deformation gestures. The, the surface gesture set consists of 14 2D gestures which are performed on the textile. Similar to conventional touchscreen interactions, we provide single finger as well as multiple finger input. The deformation gestures consists of eight different gestures. These gestures are based on deforming the textiles in more dimensions, taking the advantage of the sensor's flexibility. We explored what kind of associations people have with these interactions. For example, twisting affords rotational control, where the analogy is to a physical knob. Banding allows, allows an input modality even when the hands are occupied. And twirling the fabric around the finger requires intentional coordination. It uses the metaphor of a reminder knot. We probed a wide variety of interactions on everyday glossing, enabling an expressive connection between the physical and the digital world. Now, Advait will present how these gestures can be detected. Thanks, Patrick. The common problem with machine learning techniques is that it requires a lot of training for every gesture that needs to be detected. Our aim here is to mitigate this tiring process. We train the classifier on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. In the next step, we convert the raw sensor data into a grayscale force image. Further, we separate the foreground and the background of each pixel to find the region of interest. We calculate the pressure information using the raw sensor data that helps us to, to detect the magnitude at any given instance. Furthermore, we do bilinear upscaling and Gaussian filtering for blob detection. As you can see in these images, the nine train gestures are highly discriminative. Therefore, we only calculate the histogram and the properties of central contours bounding box, including height, width, area, and perimeter as features for the classification. Further, we use the extracted features as an input for the SVM classifier. This gesture classification is position invariant. Therefore, training each gesture at different location is not required. Also, due to contour detection mechanism, we can detect the position on sleeve where the gesture is performed. So far, we have trained nine gestures and we use here is a set of heuristics 
to, to extend our learning-based algorithm to detect untrained gestures. In total, we are able to derive 13 additional gestures from only three trained ones. For this, we use simple yet robust fundamentals as heuristics. For example, rub gesture is a combination of detecting a hand that we trained during the classifier, classifier and the oscillating pattern of the blob centroid coordinate. Therefore, we use the concept of first order derivative to identify this motion. Similarly, for shake, we use the classifier's prediction of grasp. Spread is derived from the finger classification. There is a linear change of bounding box area. For a spread, the area of the bounding box increases, while for the close, the area of the bounding box decreases. Furthermore, for detecting the direction up, down, left, and right of the gesture, we save the consecutive blob centroid coordinates in a buffer and compute the slope. To evaluate our hybrid gesture detection algorithm, we conducted two empirical studies. The participants in both experiments have been from a local university. Smart Sleep is a custom-tailored device. Therefore, we recruited only three males and three females with almost identical arm dimensions with ages from 23 to 25. All participants were right-handed and used 2D interfaces like smartphones and tablets on a daily basis. None of them had any experience with smart clothing before. With the first experiment, we wanted to evaluate the accuracy of our learning-based algorithm. Furthermore, we wanted to investigate if the gestures can be detected throughout the sleeve. Therefore, we evaluated the nine trained gestures. The participants were instructed to perform four trials of each gesture on a marked position to train the classifier. Next. The participants were asked to perform four trials of each gesture type on the same location and four trials of each gesture type on arbitrary location. To avoid training effects, the gestures were shown in a randomized order. The results of the first experiment have shown promising accuracy of 92% when training and testing was performed on the same location. For different testing location, the accuracy was 87% which indicates it is position invariant. These results are only from four training trials, and we believe with more training, the accuracy will improve. Our next experiment addressed the accuracy of the heuristics. In this study, we evaluate the 13 derived gestures. The same participant from study one performed each gestures five times in randomized order. Overall, we had an accuracy rate of 84%. Spread achieved the highest accuracy of 97%. Unlike Project Jacquard, which has rigid curves in a jacket form fractal, our design choice for smart sleeve is to have a soft and comfortable material, which can be directly worn on the skin. Thus, it needs to be flexible. As a result of this design choice, swipe left with full hand was 57% as the textile deforms while performing the gesture. Now, we would like to present some of the application scenarios which demonstrate a combination of the previously discussed interaction techniques. Here, the user interacts with the video player using bend gesture to trigger play. A finger swipe down gesture to fast forward the video, and a finger swipe up gesture to rewind the video. whereas a hand swipe gesture is used to switch between videos in a playlist. The rotational control analogy provided by twisting can be used to control the volume of the audio. To mute the audio, or as a state change, the user pushes the sleeve up. In the next application, the user performs conventional touch gestures as input modality. For example, spread to zoom out and pinch to zoom in. Now we would like to discuss the future work that we are currently working on. 
While the three-layer approach is a practical solution for resistive sensing, it was problematic in solutions when the user grasps only the two top layers while performing the gesture. Therefore, in the future work, we would like to reduce the layer stack to a single layer. Additionally, we would like to integrate different spatial sensing resolution to fit user's need. Also, a designing tool to create user-customized interactive garments. Furthermore, we would like to give visual feedback to enable input as well as output on the textile itself. Summarizing, with the smart sleeve, we have shown a soft and flexible textile sensor that allows the freeform manipulations. The continuous pressure sensing provides expressive input capability. It enables the detection of 14 surface and eight deformation gestures. Overall, this brings us one step closer to our vision of using clothing as an always available input medium to the digital world. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be pleased to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Um, hello, Yang Zhang from uh, Carnegie Mellon. Great work, country, uh, congratulations. So I just have one question. Uh, since you are detecting the finger on top of the sleeve, do you also get the signal from the skin underneath, for example, your arm? And how do you like make your system robust so that it doesn't take account of the signal from the arm? So, just to get it right. So you mean if you are detecting a finger on the arm, and there is any other signal that is happening at the same time? Because the sleeve is sitting on top on the arm, right? And the, there's like uh, your arm underneath the sleeve. Will it change the signal? No. So when you press the sleeve, it only appears the single blob. So we reduce the, we, we do perform a threshold that re removes other noises that happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have time for another question. Any other questions? I actually have a question for you I've been wanting to ask. So um, your examples, I don't know if everyone can hear me. Your examples were um, mostly about explicit interaction on the sleeve with gestures and so on. But uh, with fabric, right, we could have a whole body suit covering all of our body. So um, do you think of, at all about how you might do activity monitoring or other kind of passive sensing that's not, not using it as a touch surface per se, but using it to monitor the body in motion and could be useful for athletic training or physical therapy or other things like that? Um, yes, prior work have shown that this is doable with the textile sensor. For example, for detecting bracing, as well as like bending the, the prosthesis. And well, that's an interesting topic for the future as well, for sure.